Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be doing a really big garden harvest and we have not done a big garden harvest in probably about a month. We are very much still in like the spring vegetable season. So we have some of the same stuff that we picked last time in the last big harvest video, but we have some new stuff to pick as well today. So we have strawberries to pick. We are in like peak strawberry season right now. We're probably picking over a quart of strawberries a day. We also might have some asparagus, we'll check for that. And then we have plenty of carrots. I've been doing a lot of kale harvesting and we have peas as well as a couple of root vegetables like beets and kohlrabi So I think we're gonna have a really nice selection of things to pick today. So let's get started I'm gonna show you all of the different areas and we're gonna get harvesting Probably the first thing we're gonna go around and pick is our strawberries and this is also our asparagus bed you can see we've covered our strawberries, so we're gonna lift up the netting and see what we've got here. As I've mentioned, we are in peak strawberry season, so we've been really picking a lot lately. And we did not pick yesterday, so there should be a lot for us to pick today. And I think I also see some asparagus that's ready to pick as well. And then we also have the area in front of our greenhouse that has our two strawberry beds, and we're gonna check for strawberries there too. So I think that's what we're gonna start with today. In this bed, we have some golden beets that I want to pick. And these beets I've grown in clusters where I have multiple plants in each of these clusters. And you can see how there is one here that is bigger than the other two. So today I'm going to go ahead and pick the biggest ones, kind of go through and see if there are any big ones to pick because once I pick out that bigger one, the smaller ones in the cluster can get larger once the space is cleared out. This one is definitely a nice size. It's not like the hugest beet, but I think this is the perfect size for eating because as they get bigger, they do get more tough. So that one there was a good one that I've seen and I think this one here also might be nice. So yeah, we've just got to go through and see what we're working with here kind of pull them aside and see how they're looking under the soil. Again, they're not the hugest right now, but as we pull them out, it makes space for the other ones. So it's nice to kind of clear out the space a little bit for the remaining beets. On the other side, I have my red cylindrical beets and I don't think any of these are quite ready yet. I've never grown cylindrical beets before though, so I can't really be sure like how far down the beets go. It kind of looks like they're not ready. We'll have to go through and look a little bit, but actually, you know, I think these ones might be good. So we might pick these. We'll just go in and see what looks like it's a good eating size. So I know you can eat the beet greens. I'm not sure if we're gonna do that. Do Chicken's we? Do you like beet greens? Uh, I don't think as much as other greens. Yeah, we don't prefer them. And since we have a lot of kale, I think I'll just cut these off and give them to the chickens. But we'll eat the beet, obviously. <laughs> Thank you. 
here is the bed of spring greens. We have all the kale over here, and then I have some kohlrabi to pick on this side of the bed. You can see that the kale is doing really well. I've been harvesting a lot of this just to eat as much as possible during the week. I try to work into my meal plans, but I also have been preserving a lot of this kale, especially this um, type of kale. I've been freezing a lot of that and then the dazzling blue kale. I've mostly been using this one fresh because this one is my favorite one out of the two varieties. So I prefer to eat this one fresh, but this kale is still amazing. You can use them interchangeably, but since I like this one more, I've just been preserving a lot of this one. Recently, I've made kale chips out of this kale, which I think it is so, so great for because it has these flat leaves Whereas you can see the difference, the other kale has more like frilly leaves and I think most kale is like this, like if you get it at the store, it's usually a curly type of kale, which I find is not as good for kale chips because the edges can burn a little too easily. But with this kale, since it's flat, it's really easy to coat it with the oil and the spices that you want to use for kale chips. And it just cooks up really, really evenly. So I was able to get really nice crispy kale chips without any burnt edges and not too much like soggy, uncrispy kale. So if you like making kale chips, definitely try growing like a lacinato type because the flat leaves are just it for that. So yeah, I've been loving that. And then for the kohlrabi over here, I have a couple that are not doing so well. So this one here, you can see that it's split and it has just been getting like bigger and bigger and it is just like a monstrosity. I'm going to cut this one and just give it to the chickens because like there's not much I'm gonna get out of that and it looks kind of gross. They're gonna love the leaves. This one just, did not get very big for some reason and I have found that with kohlrabi it's not always like 100% they'll all form like a really big bulb at least when I've tried it but on the other side of the bed I am very very happy with these two kohlrabi plants you can see that they have bulbed up really nicely and this is the biggest kohlrabi bulb I have ever gotten I've only grown the purple variety before so I wanted to try this white variety because I thought that they would form bigger bulbs and I think I was right in that because this is bigger than any kohlrabi I've grown before and the other one also is looking really amazing. So I think I'm going to go ahead and pick both of these today and I'm going to be making like a kohlrabi slaw out of them. Maybe I'll do like a pulled pork this week. We'll do like pulled pork sandwiches and tacos and then I can make a kohlrabi slaw to go with both of those meals. I might also check our cabbage plants and I don't think we have any like heads of cabbage but I can pull off the outer leaves and slice those up really finely and add that into the slaw as well. So yeah, I'm gonna pick both of these bulbs today and then just kind of go through this bed and clear it out a little. I'm gonna pull out that bad kohlrabi for the chickens and then I think I'm also just gonna go ahead and pull out all of these Chinese broccoli plants and give those to the chickens as well. I've mentioned this, this just is not really my favorite plant that we've grown. The stems are kind of fibrous and we've eaten a few of these stems but they're just not my favorite and now that they have started to flower the flavor will be a lot more pungent and like bitter and peppery. So yeah I'm just gonna go ahead clear out the space and give these to the chickens to enjoy. You can see we also have some caterpillars coming in here as well eating the leaves so I would rather just like get rid of any plants that they can be feeding on. Guts, if I'm honest. Okay, that's fine. Give to the chickens. I would prefer no slug guts. It's like somebody sneezed on it.
Every time I turn around, this man is on the ground. What is he doing? I don't know. Next, we've got this trellis of snow peas that we have to go through and pick. There are lots and lots of peas on here right now. You can probably see all of them. They're so gorgeous. So yeah, we're gonna go through that whole thing. And then in front of that, my Canterbury Bells have opened up and oh my goodness, they are even more beautiful than I could have hoped for. I am so, so happy with them. So worth the wait. Even though it feels like I planted them so long ago, it was just last year, but they're all blooming so nicely right now. Absolutely stunning. A lot of them turned out to be this like really jewel-y purple color, but my favorite one is this lavender purple one here. I think it's just so, so gorgeous. And I feel like this is a really popular color right now. I'm definitely loving it. And then we also have some white Canterbury bells uh, with some other plants that I planted in the back of the garden, which I'll show you. So here are the white Canterbury bells. I also think they're so pretty. I think that's a bad beetle. I think this is a wood boring beetle. I'm gonna have to check with Aaron, see if we need to kill that guy. But yeah, besides the beetle, these are really gorgeous. I think the white and the purple is so, so pretty. Um, I'll leave a link to the seeds that I bought. They were very easy to start and they overwintered really, really nicely for us here. They never turned brown. They were kind of just like green throughout the whole winter and I'm definitely going to be planting these again this year um, so that I can get more blooms next year. So highly recommend starting these if you like the look of these spikes of bell-shaped flowers as much as I do. And while we're talking about peas, I also wanted to mention the English style peas that I planted this year that I was trying out. I had mentioned that these plants I was really confused about because I thought they were supposed to get a lot taller than they actually did. They're only like three feet tall. And also when they f the peas first formed, they were kind of flat like a snow pea. And I was really confused. I thought maybe they were just like the wrong seed, but I just let them grow and the pea pods have fattened up and you can see how this one is a lot wider so we've tried out some of these and if you open it up if you open it up the english peas are inside there that you can eat so there you go those are the peas we definitely don't have enough to really do anything with other than just snack in the garden because i only had a few plants actually germinate and you only get like a handful of peas per pod but they are fun to just snack on in the garden, so it's fine for the small amount of space they take up. Here, you wanna try it out? Is it sweet? Mm-hmm, really good. Nice. Right. Mm. Really good. They're good, they're sweet. Mm -hmm. I mean, we tried growing them in the fall, and they were not that sweet, they were kind of starchy, but I think because it's the spring, it's not as hot, they taste really good this mm -hmm. time. So here is the final harvest for today. We ended up picking quite a few beets and we picked some of our red ones as well as the golden ones. We've got a few spears of asparagus, some snow peas, a couple of nice big kohlrabi, lots of strawberries, and then also a big tub of kale. So pretty good harvest. We are happy with this and it is starting to rain now. So we've got to get all of this inside, but I hope you guys enjoyed this harvest video. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again in the next one. <laughs> oh my God. They could not even wait. <laughs> oh my gosh, she hopped right in. All right, toss those to give them a distraction. All right. You ready? <laughs> that was so funny. That was yeah, get the good stuff, the berries. Ooh, it's really raining now. I promise.
Clem. Aww. Yeah, Clem. Hey, baby. <laughs> All right, we should go. It's raining. Oh my gosh, so cute.